And so I did it on my own. And then I just realized like, I really enjoyed being a part of a team. And that's also part of your brand too. Like what, what, what do you enjoy? Do you like to be part of it? Do you want to be on your own? Okay. So I'm going to basically do something where I'm using my, um, these two skills. Uh, and I'll tell you that in a second, but let me kind of show you this first, just as a little funny. Okay. So think about this. Okay. My two things that I bring, I feel to the table in the real estate world is my education background because then I'm able to communicate, you know, and teach the real estate that I know to my clients in my, the organization part. All right. So I found this little clip and I thought it was brilliant because here it shows that they're not organized. So let's take a look. Have you seen this? Oh, wait, stop. There's no sound. Uh, let's see. Hopefully there's sound. You started on time. I did. I love you. Oh, hey. I'm a retired school teacher. <laughs> the bell has rung. Um, I wonder if there's sound on this. Can you hear? Let's see. Hopefully, if not, I'll forget this. Is Christina on? I think so. Let's see. Let's see if this goes. So then we have everything we need for this meeting. It's all right here, sir. Is your data backup as reliable as it should be? The water screen told me everything. Ours is bright store storage software from Computer Associates. So the reason why I show that is because basically, you know, that guy was relying on everything, right? And he had no other, he wasn't organized or whatever. And he was just relying on people to basically give that information. But basically those two people were knocked out. So I just thought it was kind of funny. All right, so moving along here, let's take a look. So here it is. Who are you? Okay. So what do you want people to know about you? So kind of think about that for a second. What do you bring to the real estate table? Okay. So what I said is I bring education from my educational background as well as organization. And it's funny because when I sat down and I had a meeting with Bill, like uh, about a year or so ago. And he said, he was talking to me, he's like, come on. He's like, you're a part of your real estate, you're organized, you have to let people know that. So within my, within my, um, you know, uh, email signature, we brought in educating my clients at the highest level on real estate. Okay, so this way, they know, right, I am there for them. Okay, so I want you to take about a minute or two and let's have a quick little go back and forth. And anybody online, if you want to kind of chat, you know, put that in the chat, please feel free. But let's think about what's one thing that you feel that you can bring to the real estate table to start developing your brand. Think about it for a minute or two. And if anybody wants to share, please feel free. What do you think? Does anybody want to say anything what you think you bring? That would make you stand out. Yeah. Uh, Investor minded. I know a lot. I, I do wholesale on the side. So like, uh, work, I'm working on a funnel of getting to meet a lot of investors mm -hmm. and offering them like multifamily properties, whether they're on the MLS or off market. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So you're, so you're going to be building your brand off of that. Yeah. Right. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. So even here, like, when Bill told me, bring that in, you, when you have your email signature, kind of bring that in. So people, when they read your emails, they know that, right? What about you, Jack? Anything you can think? Cause you had, you were in sales and everything prior to, right? Yeah, I was like um, strong in uh, project management and marketing. 
signs, customer uh, customer service. Yeah. So, but even so, you're saying project management. That's huge because so bring that in, right? Because you're going to then same thing the organization, right? So bring that's how I would definitely bring that in. What about you, Kina? Oh, I don't know. That's why I'm here. Oh. Jeez. Thanks, Kina. Okay, <laughs> we're moving on. <laughs> so I'm going to show you this, the things that I do to, um, to use my education in organization when I'm representing the buyer. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, step one, is if I get a new lead and it's a buyer, what are the next steps that I'm going to do? And, I'll, and I can, I'll share all these with you, okay? So um, what I can do is I just would need your, you know, possibly what I could do is send it to Christina and we can take it from there. Okay, so what are my next steps? Well, the first thing you have to do is gather the information, okay? You need to grab their name, their phone number, and email address. And I will be honest with you, I this is one thing that I used to be like, oh, you know, uh, okay, I'll just have your name. But what I've been starting to do now is say, do me a favor. Um, you know, if they're talking and what their name is, I said, do me a favor. I'm going to text you how your name is spelled. Tell me if it's correct or not. Okay? Or this is the email address that I have. Tell me if it's correct or not. Right? And then a lot of times, sir, it's it's really interesting because they want to correct you, you know? So that's been helping for me. Uh, time frame of getting into a new home. Do you have a home to sell to purchase a new property? If no, ask about their current living situation. Are they month to month? Um, are they living with their parents? Okay. Um, if yes, can they buy that new home without selling? So what um, they're see, what they're already starting to see through my brand is I'm trying to educate myself on their situation as well as helping them um, and organizing their needs. Have they spoken to a lender? What are they looking for in a new home? Areas that they're focused on, what's special about this? I have clients right now, I can't look in any other towns if they don't have a train station, okay? So why should I be sending them something in Kinalon? When I know, because guess what? If I send them something in Kinalon, there's no train station, guess what? They're gonna say, she's not even listening to me. Right? So that's so important to grab all that information. Are you familiar with what's going on in the market right now? Okay. And if you are, you guys are funny. <laughs> and if, um, if they, if basically when you ask that question, you get an insight into what they know about. And this is what I, regardless of what they say, close for a buyer's consultation. Okay, and I'm going to be very honest with you. I need to work on that. One. I really do. All right. So step two, as soon as I gather all that information, what am I going to do? I set up the automatic search for the buyer in the towns they want. Now, this is what I did something differently. What I decided to do is I used to send it to them all the time. Right now, based on what they gather, <laughs> Based on what they gather, I look and I look at the houses and then I send them the ones that I think would fit. Right? So you don't want to email them. You have it. Yes. I, yeah, I'm like this. <laughs> they think I'm like a flight attendant. So um, basically that's what I do. Right? For the MLS. I, for the yeah. MLS. I go through them all in the morning. And then what I do is I have, I have my little piece of paper with their name. And I jot down the ones that I'm going to send to them, right? Because if they say they don't want to fix her upper, and one of them's a fix her upper, guess what? Now you're just showing she's not listening to me. Okay. What about the neighborhood nurture? Yes. Like your command. Would yep. You so only if you can get their address. Right. Right. Okay. So if you can get their address, yes, do the neighborhood nurture. Okay. And what some people have been saying, and I haven't done it yet, and I need to, is the KWF. Okay. Right. Because then if you put that in there, uh, basically it's a, it's, they put in a certain town. It's a little bit more instantaneous than they say that the MLS is. Okay. So and I haven't tried that yet. I'll be honest. 
Okay, so set up any plans within your CRM, your command to remind you to lead follow-up. And that's huge, lead follow-up. Quick funny story of last week. So here I am, I'm doing my lead follow-up and I was telling Keita this. And I said to this one, hey guy, hey, so-and-so, how, how's everything going? Just wanna check in. You know, I, I saw this one house that you might be interested in. And all of a sudden, he said, um, well, this is where I am right now. And he sent me a photo of this picture. And I don't know who was in the picture. I assumed his wife. She was in the hospital, tube sticking out of her whole stomach. And I was like, oh my goodness, right? So it's, I said, I, I came downstairs. I said to my husband, well, at least I know he feels comfortable with me, <laughs> right? But now I know, don't bother him. Right. You know, now I know I'm going to check in on them. Hey, how's so-and-so doing? Just checking how you, how's everything's going, right? So that lead follow-up, which is, you know, and I don't say, hey, how's the home search? I'm like, hey, how's it going? Just checking in. So that's, that's what I do. Um, okay. So when I go for the buyer's consultation, I set up a date and appointment. I send a calendar invite, Zoom link, info location. So a lot of times, I'll be honest, I'll do the Zoom. They're more comfortable with that. But the calendar invite is so important because it does give the Zoom link, but it also shows organization, right? So I send a graphic of topics that will be discussed via email. And this is my graphic of topics, okay? So uh, they know we're going to be talking about all these different steps when I talk about... Um, when I, when I talk within a buyer's consultation. This is the one thing about the buyer's consultation and I need to do better and I've gotten better at it, but I need to do even better, better. <laughs> That's a word, it's not. Um, I need to make it at least 20 minutes because sometimes these buyer consultations are 45 minutes and you're like, oh my gosh, right? So that's the one thing when you do a buyer's consultation, try to make it as, as as concise. concise as possible. Because then again, in your buyer's consultation, for me, I'm bringing in organization and education, okay? So what, um, after I have my buyer's consultation, okay? And so I'm going to now show gratitude and I'm going to send materials that also provide education as well as organization. So I'm going to send, and I brought copies of these. So that, guys, I don't know if you can see this online, but these are my thank you cards, okay? And inside my thank you card, I put my, my um, business card, right? So then this way, even if I'm, I'm on a team, but this way, I, you know, they see my face, right? They see the team I'm on, but they know me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So let me show you these. I'm going to pass these out to you. And they're nice. Like you could just even, if you don't mind, just pass it here. It's nice because they're they're a nice quality, right? So, and I remember somebody saying to me, Colleen, you got, you know, we decided to work with you because you sent us a thank you card. Right? So if they know, I'm not gonna miss the little things or try not to. I send a thank you email with various links, a mock contract so they know, because I'll say to them, listen, before you even start going into um, looking at houses, you've gotta know what this contract looks like. Because I don't wanna send it to you five minutes before you need to sign it. So I send a mock contract and I send winning strategies and other things. If a buyer's agreement is signed, and it sounds so bad, but it will be now, right? So if a buyer's agreement is signed, I send, and I, or actually I give a copy when we go out to look at houses at my buyer's guide booklet, okay? So, and I'll pass these around so you can kind of see it. Did you create this or like? Uh, I did. Via Etsy. <laughs> wow. 
So I took it from, I bought it from Etsy. Customized it in Canada. And then I customized it, yes. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like online, okay? So you can kind of see it. There's this thing that I used, it was called, um, it's called Publu. So in my email, I will give them this, right? But I'm also sending them this here as well. Because if they're home, if they're at work, they can look at it, all right? So what I love about this is I showed this Kina and I, right? It has the, the sound of turning pages, ready right? here. <laughs> so, and then this way, so once again, what is this bringing this back to my brand? Education and organization, right? So does this cost a lot? In Cam and Etsy, no, I think I bought it for what fifteen bucks, and then I did it myself. Right? Did you pretty much use the whole thing? I the way they did. I mean, you customized yeah. it. You did have to change some stuff. But yes. You pretty much used. Okay. I, I did. I pretty much used the whole thing. Yes. Now I am going to be honest with you. I a lot of times I would I printed it and I stapled it and I handed it to them. Now. I'm starting to make booklets, all right? Only because now that we're have to be, you know, the buyer's agreement, I want them to say, I'm working with her, right? So, and I'm gonna be honest, a friend of mine is a printer. So that, that card there, he did for it. If you notice, I created the logo, right? That it was just simple, sweet, but popped. And so that's something that you have to think about too, as well. Okay. Organized, but yet educated. Okay. So that is, so if you notice, it is to me, and then here's my resources, right? These are my testimonials, but there's something that Jeff Glover said, which I, I just, I really, I just love him. Um, but what he does is he'll do something very similar. But if he he might he might have a lot of reviews. So what I will do is when I get there, when I have a lot of reviews, I'll just keep printing them on separate pieces of paper and then just keep adding it. I might not put it in a booklet because that's more money, but I might add it here. All right. And then give it to them uh, separately. But if you notice, there's my team too. Okay, so. Um, and Colleen, yeah. you recommend, because I've heard, you know, different advice, whether or not um, you give them the buyer's guide via email or you actually give them a hard copy, um, but you prefer to give them that actual hard copy. I, I'm doing both. You're doing both. You give it to them electronically. Okay. I am. I'm doing both. Only because... I had a client that um, one person loved the hard copy, one person was tech, right? So I just do both because if this way, if they wanted to, and like I said, they were at work and they wanted to check something and that was home, they can do so right away. So it's just, someone said to me once, Colleen, you, you do a lot, right? Colleen, um, you're, you're, you're going to burn out at this. I might, but you know what? I'm going to fight for it. Okay. So, but these are systems that I do that basically just become ingrained in me. And I do, I do email templates that everything is just sent. And then that's already in there. But I don't have to worry about it. I just have to put, customize it and send it. So, Okay, so now let's look at this next one, showing homes, right? How to stand out when showing homes. Okay, so when um, bringing in my education in, and organization, I send an email to clients with documents on the property. I know some agents will just bring the client, the, the, the clients, the paperwork when they get there. I like to do it ahead of time. And I also bring the documents when I'm there as well, okay? Send calendar invite as well as location property within the calendar invite. 
And Can you show us how to do that? You want me to? Okay. Sure. Just let me see at the end. No, at the end. Yeah, definitely. Remind me that. Okay. Absolutely. So, and if somebody has, I think like if anybody has like a Yahoo or an AOL, I don't think it's going to happen, but there's a lot of people that have the Gmails now. Um, so I like doing that. And you know what else I like, why I like doing that is because I do it for each home that you're seeing for that day. If showing various properties, send, send counter invites for each and label showing one, showing two, because then I get my data of how many showings I had for that year, how many showings I had for that month, okay? Then I send stats to the client about the area statistics and comps. Only, I'll be honest with you, only if they really like that property. If I know that that house, there is a best and final coming up, we've got to make it fast. I'm going to send those comp, like the um, stats, that say it's for a three bedroom house for the month of May, because I just did this in Rockaway, it was 108% for the stats for month of May for a three bedroom house. That means on average, it's 8% over list price. So they know automatically how, do they, how much do they really like this house, okay? First time client, what I do, I was like, what these off of Amazon, okay? And I give them a folder. My business card goes here, all right? And I'll be honest with you, I think I'm gonna change it to a black folder. <laughs> they have the KW ones like that on it? Yes, or? yep. I have black ones. Yep, you have the black ones? Yeah. I think I wanna get the black ones. Mm -hmm. I think they look a little more sleek because if you notice my buyer's thing is, is black, you know? Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna do black ones, but so, um, I think I got like 25 folders. And what I'll do is I, first time client, guys, here's the folder. I don't know if you can see that. First time client, I have paperwork in here and everything else, right? And then I hand it to them and I say, if this is the folder that you're gonna keep all the paperwork in when we go out on properties, if you don't like the house, get rid of it. If you like the house, and you lost out on it, keep it in this folder and write notes why you liked it, what you didn't, so on and so forth. So, and when they go under contract, you know how many of them I've seen bring this to the closing, right? So, and guys, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I started was giving a folder to the, if it was two people looking at the house, let's say it was a husband and wife, I give it one to the husband and the wife. I'm like, Oh, no way. Oh, I am not paying for two folders anymore. You know, you get one folder. So just so. All right. Okay. So I have this client. Clients. They're undecided buyers. These are the ones that are looking in Ramsey. Train station, right? They're looking for places for a train station. So what was happening was. He kept saying, well, I don't understand, Colleen. Why do we have to go higher? Why do we have to keep going? I don't get it. I don't get it. And I kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I was like, there's got to be a better way to this because this is exhausting, right? So I created a spreadsheet for these buyers. And then basically, I'm going to show you a copy of that. And I put homes we have put offers on. Homes shown and didn't put in an offer because I wanted them to see what's going on in the market, okay? Once again, bringing it back to my brand, education, organization, okay? So let's take a look what this looks like, all right? So if I go here, so this is an example, okay? So if you notice in Glen Rock, right? You can see this is what I'm doing, all right? So we have, I, I just showed this property, 62 Jean Street with them. List price was 889, all right? So he, you'll notice it's very different. You noticing the sales prices, correct? So when I sent this to my client, this was their response. 
This was their first response. I I just screenshot it only because I couldn't get his name off of it. And I didn't want to show his name. This is great and very helpful, Colleen. Thank, thank you, Colleen, right? I added another property to it. This is her response on June 12th. Thank you, Colleen, and thank you for sending. This is extremely helpful. It's starting to look like the 950-ish is the magic number for the type of house and location we're looking at. So what have I shown them? I educated them and they've, I've shown them I'm organized. I'm working with these buyers for a year, almost a year and a half now. And they stayed with me. And the reason I think they're staying with me is because I'm, you know, showing them value. value. Exactly. So, any questions so far? No? Okay. Number three, writing offers. How are you going to stand out as an agent? And how are you going to stand out to your clients when you write an offer? Okay. I've had offers accepted because of how I have presented them. Okay. So I'm going to gather the information for writing new offers. I send stats. Remember, I talked to you about the whole stat situation to your clients about the era statistics and the comps in the area. I gather information of what they want to offer the property, the down payment, the inspection, and the appraisal. The reason I try to do that all up front because I hate going back and forth, back and forth, okay? Also, I brainstorm with my client anything else that they would like to offer to make their offer more appealing to the seller. I call the listing agent. Hey, is there anything you want I, I can, we can do? Same things, movie plus, transfer tax, legal belongings in the home, et cetera, okay? Offering, um, for one mind, we offered $3,000 towards inspections, the first $3,000 of any inspection issues, okay? We did $5,000, this is one thing, we said, we're doing an appraisal, but we're offering, offering $5,000 What? Or if the if it doesn't appraise, we'll offer five thousand. What it over what it appraises for, capped at a certain number. Okay, so putting the offer together, I put information in offer in an organized email. I write it up, and this is so important. I write it up and send it to my buyer so they can look at it and approve it via an email back to me. Why do you think I do that? so that they could look it over mm -hmm. and say, go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> because if I put in an offer, right, and there's something in there that they don't like, it's going to blow back on me. Correct? Yeah. So, I then send it to the listing agent with buyer CC'd on the offer email. I used to not do that when I first was in the business. But then I was like, you know what? It's their offer. They should be CC'd on it. So I CC my clients because then this way they see what I sent. Okay. I also, I created an offer cover sheet. And let me show you what all these look like. Okay. So this is my example of my offer email. All right. And um, I just kind of screenshotted it. Um, but of course, at the top, I just say, dear, whatever the listing agent's name is you know, blah, 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 blah. But then this is the meat and potatoes. That's my offer email, okay? So if we take a look, all right? I talk about down payment, the mortgage, the closing and the inspections. And this is, an ex this is actually one of my clients, okay? Um, so on and so forth. Notice I put in the home inspector and the attorney information. Why do you think I do that? They know who you're working with. Yeah, and they know this person's ready to go, right? I'll be honest with you. Sometimes they don't even use these attorneys <laughs> or the inspectors, right? But I put it in there, right? I'll I'll, I'll say, hey Matt, the, you know my client up, up, they might be using. He's like, okay, no worries. But then I say, please find the attached filing documents in a single PDF, and then I put them all down. What is there? Okay. Um, my clients are aware 
oh, this is actually, there were solar panels, okay? And then we put, and this was something that Bill had said. So it says, please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. And please note that everything is negotiable. Okay. So notice I make things different colors and I make things highlighted and I make things stand out. Now, a client said to me once, they're like, wow, huh, that's really, that's really impressive email. Right. Um, and what I also do in it, which, you know, you're not allowed to put, let you not to do letters or anything. What I, what I do sometimes is I put background on my clients, school teacher, this, that, blah, 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 but I keep it like fair housing, right? They can see, um, uh, what was it? Um, they love the architecture of the home. They love this. So uh, I'll put that in there up at the top. And actually, um, my clients actually won because they loved the little blurb of why my clients love the whole thing. So, um, so we put that all through there. Okay, so that's my example of an offer email. And then this is my example of my cover sheet. So at the beginning of the offer, and there's a reason why I did this. When I was... First in the business, I was like, this is making me crazy. Like if I was getting all of these multiple offers, I would love to be able to just say, all right, what are they offering, right? So what are they offering? So I'm telling them right off the bat, they see my email and then they're gonna scroll down and see all this. Now, when um, I, one of my colleagues, I have shown this to one of my colleagues, she's like, oh my God, Colin, could I, could I use this? I'm like, absolutely, go right ahead. And mine was a different color. She made this color, I'm like, I'm using that, yeah. <laughs> right? So I'm like, I love this, I'm gonna do this. Can I use it? And she's like, absolutely. So that's the, that is the cover sheet. And I've been doing that since I first got in the business. I take and I make sure, you know, the picture of the house and I get all the, the information. But notice what I also said, Please see email, all of this is negotiable, okay? So what am I, uh, not only am I instructing, I'm um, giving education to the listing agent, but now the listing agent is able to educate her clients. And my clients see how organized everything is. Okay, so four. Offer accepted. Now, now what? I'm going to be honest with you. When I got my first offer accepted, I thought I was going to throw up because I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? How am I, can I, how am I going to keep all these things going? What am I going to do? So I created a spreadsheet. Of course I did. <laughs> right? So I created a spreadsheet to help me keep on track as well as my clients is what's happening. Because I didn't want my clients to say, what's next coming? What's next coming? What's next coming? So what I did is I'm always gonna tell them what's next, but I just knew from my students, sometimes they would email me at three in the morning. And guess what? I've had clients who have texted me early morning hours. So I created this spreadsheet and it looks like this, and I'll show it to you in a second, that this way I share it with them and they're able to see what's going on in the transaction. Is this a lot? Absolutely. Does it show my brand? Absolutely. Okay. But let me tell you something. When you're trying to find an email, right? And you're like, I know it, I know it, I know it. Well, I'm going to show you. I know I was like, okay, that email was sent on such and such. Let me show you. This is what it looks like. Okay. So this is actually the one, the 29 um, Glen Drive. You'll see right through here, offers accepted. I did that. The date I did it on, I'm going to, I write my little notes on it. Okay. And another thing I do, I put in links here. So this, because do not buy, I found this little article 
So I'll send this like, okay, I gotta make sure I send this. So this little article shows, do not buy anything when purchasing a house until after closing. All right, so I send them that and I put here when I sent it, okay? Because they know if that affects their loan to value, buy my house, right? So, and I talk to them about it. So I go through all of these steps with them. And then they see, notice I put things in here that they might not even have, but I just keep it and I just strike it through that it's not there. So impressive. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Not so everyone does this, right? No. I've, I've never seen this before. Thank you. So wow. I go through all of this. Okay. So you didn't have to worry about that. Send moving article because there was a, I told them. There is this blogger that I follow and she was moving and she lost $80,000 in the move because she got scammed. Mm -hmm. So this article shows them safe steps to protect their belongings. And they were like, wow, Colin, we never even have thought of that. Even the whole thing about like, like, oh, we can't go to Raymore and Flanagan and open up a 0% credit card to pay for furniture? Uh, no, <laughs> you can't. Wait till after closing, okay? So I go through all of these steps here. So, and also here, I put in the financial. Okay, this close so I can show you this, all right? So you notice this, if this is different because I put in mine that it was due 10 days, they changed it in attorney review, so follow those Make sure you read that. And I changed it. Do. Okay. So I make sure I put all that through there. Okay. And then I put the important dates. And then I also make sure for this. Why do you think I want to ask the lender when that is? Who would they know? Yeah, exactly. You bet we got to make sure that we're we're closed by the 28th because guess what? That's when your rate lock expires. Calling the mortgage code the letter, what needs to happen with that aside from just making sure the client has received it from their lender? So you what, have to, this one? Yeah. The mortgage commitment? Yeah, yeah. So I said it doesn't have to go to the attorneys, it doesn't have no, to No, it mortgage. usually does. It does, but I'm gonna make sure that, that it's due by the it was due by May 6th. Okay. So what I do is I started to do this as well. I started sending myself emails. So if I see that it was due May, like the deposit is due a certain day, I email myself, schedule, send it a few days ahead of time. So this way, if it hasn't been sent yet, that deposit, I, I email the attorney, hey, or and my clients, hey, just so you know, if you haven't sent the deposit yet, it's due on such and such day. Okay. Okay. So there's that. Is there something else? And then over here, I also put down the documents that they had to sign or whatever. And then up here, you'll see on this side, I put down everybody's names and stuff who we're working with. So they, when they saw that I had a client, her husband came to a um, he wasn't with us the first time, but he was there for the inspections and he shook my hand. He goes, so you're the one with the spreadsheet. <laughs> and I said, I'm the one with the spreadsheet. He goes, that's effing awesome. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. You know? So I was like, thanks. And you know what? And that makes you feel good. Right? So, um, anyway, can you tell I like spreadsheets? So well, now I'm going to show you, well, let me go back. Any questions on how I'm showing my brand through education and organization as representing with a bot. Any questions on that? No. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how I'm lit, how I'm, whoop, let me go back. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let me go back. So now I'm going to show you how I'm going to represent as with the seller. Okay. So, if I'm, look how cute you look. Wow. 
So if you take a look, so now I'm going to listing presentations. I remember, I mean, I was, a, I, I went on a couple of them with my first team leader and I was like sitting there, I was like, oh, please don't let me talk. Please don't let me talk, you know? And then I got one by myself. I thought I was going to throw up, right? So I knew I needed to be so prepared that I was just like data, 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 right? So I knew I had to do something. So I needed to prep myself and, and materials. Because let me tell you something, I was I'm probably not the only one that they're going to interview. So, but if I can show them my education and my organization and all the prep that I do, I probably would be walking away with that listing. Okay. So let me see. So I used to do the RPR for my CMA. Keenan and I would do it a couple of times. And we we're like, let's try that again. Right. And then I was like, I, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. And so I'm like, I'm doing something different. So I begin to look at comps in the MLS and I created a spreadsheet for the appointment. And that's my spreadsheet for the appointment. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Okay, so if we take a look here, I knew, okay, this is my, this is my Maplewood listing. And let me tell you something, in Maplewood, you wanna know how I got that listing in Maplewood? You think it's so funny. I was at a flower shop, like a garden center. I came from showing, I had my little thing on, Kelly Ways Prosperity. She picks up a flower and she looks at me, she goes, hey, you work there? I said, I did. She said, I need to sell my house. I said, oh, that's awesome. Here's my card, here's my card, blah, blah, blah. Called her up, I got that thing. And you know what she said? Wow. And I'll tell you something else that she said after I showed this other piece, but she said, wow. I thought I wanted my house to be here. Now you show where it really needs to be. Okay. So if we take a look, this is the subject property. And I and I give her all of these. I don't just give her the spreadsheet, but I share this with her. But I also give her the MLS printouts of these. Okay. And I say, okay, so this is your property. Let's look what's right now on the market. And we take a look. So with this, I'm going to show you. I know what kind of home she wants. So guess what? I'm not putting any ranches in there. I'm not putting by levels. They're all colonials, right? So we went through. I kind of showed her everything. And we looked, okay? And I also link images. Okay? I link the images. Because she'll say, oh, well, my house is better than that. Oh, my house isn't it, right? Just, I mean, you, this way she can see it. And because I'll tell you one thing, and when she looked at this one right here, was this one, the 600,000, right? She was like, well, I, I think mine could be like that. Well, guess what? She looked at these images and she said, oh, yeah, no, my, ho my house isn't that. Okay, so and they took a lot of these images off. It was it was a lot more, but she was like, yeah, no, it's not like that. So we had a conversation of where it needed to be. And she was able to say, oh, wait, so mine has 1700 and, you know, 1768 square footage. So then I'm able to go through all of this and show the different square footage. So then once we came up with the number, she even said to me, she was like, you know what, Colleen? I went through all those images again. I looked at that spreadsheet again. I can't, I can't thank you for taking the time to put that there. You uh, sometimes I show up to an RPR booklet. It, it's just, it's so much, right? But if you put a spreadsheet like this, guess what? It's right there. And they can click on it and it's interactive for them. Does that make sense? Okay. So what do I bring for the, my listing presentation? I bring my listing booklet and I went to Staples. So the one that Keller Williams, and there are some pages in here and I can, I'll show you around, but there are things that I would probably bring that I would laminate and say, okay, here are new stats or whatever. 
I'm going to be honest with you. When I'm there and they really just want to talk about their house, we go through this, the CMA thing first. A lot of times we can get to this and they're like, we're good. I'm signing. Right. But I have this here. Let me show this to you. So I bring that. I bring my home sale timeline and I print it out for them. But I also have, if laminated, could you tell I was a teacher? Okay. <laughs> um, really quick, funny story. Um, I was taking clients out and they left a the property, but they wanted to go and look at a property like during the, it was a torrential rainstorm and they wanted to walk the, with the survey. I was like, oh, this is going to get messy. I printed out the survey, survey and I laminated them. So I gave one to each thing and they were my former students. And they're like, you don't change Mrs. C. <laughs> I, like, I know. I couldn't have you have wet paper. So, so anyway, so this home sale timeline, I go everything. I said, okay, let's just do like, you know, case by case scenario. And we go through, and then I, what I do is I write dates of when these things could happen. So they might say, well, I don't want to list right now because I, I want to be, you know, um, my one client in Maplewood, I want to I want to sell, I want to be out of here by the end of the summer, so maybe I should wait. I go, okay, let's let's just put some dates down, shall we? And she's like, oh, I got a, I got a list now. I said, yes, you do. So this is something. That thing. Sorry. Okay. I also bring this because when we're talking about prices and on the CMA, okay. And guys, if you can see this. So <clears throat> I give them a copy of this. I put it in the folder, right? But I show them, I said, all right, you want to price it at market value? You're going to have about 60% of ops. We price it a little bit below. You're opening it up to 75%. So they look at that. They want to go really high, say, all right, but you're only going to get statistics show you're going to get 10% of the people. What am I doing? I'm showing I'm organized I'm sh and I'm educating them. That's my brand. Okay. Do you need to see this or we're good? No? If you're good. The next thing I'm going to bring is if you ever get a chance and you see something by Jeff Otto, he does these workshops. And my first team leader introduced me to Jeff Otto, and I'm very grateful for her because he's just so intuitive, right? So she'll, somebody, you know, not this one client, but someone's like, well, I just did the bathroom. And they wanted to price it like 40000 because they did the bathroom. And I was like, okay, well, just so you know, a full bath model, you know, full bath, in your price range is about right now to get value back is about sixteen thousand dollars. And what if they don't like what you have done to it? Right? Doesn't mean anything. So I leave them a copy of this as well. All right. And so they a lot of these statistic people love this. Um, so I'll let you I'll put it this way. You just and then I bring my home seller guy. Okay, got a little mess up here. So once again, I'm emailing it to them and I'm giving it to them. And the best part is when I went back for my Maplewood person and I went back and we sat down to talk about open house and yada, yada, yada. I was like, she said, Colleen, I love this. She had tabs. She had, what do you call it? Um, post-it notes. She had post-it notes. She highlighted stuff, uh -huh. right? And so I was like, okay, I have a showing. Okay, I remember it says that I have to put all my belongings away and blah, blah, blah. Everything was here, right? So she loved it. But what I did is, so this is, just so you can see, this is a bigger picture. So for you guys home, you can kind of see it. Um, this is a Jeff Glover thing that I learned and I just ripped it off and duplicated it. Okay. And I just made it myself. I gave them this. This is the CMA guide. And then here's my sellers online. Where are you guys at? 
at home so you kind of, I don't know, hopefully you can see it. Okay, so there again, okay, same thing. I actually did send these to the printer and they were beautiful, but they printed them backwards. So I have to bring them back. Yeah. So um, this is, it. once again, it shows them everything. It gives my testimonials, right? Gives everything there. And then it has my brand as well as my team. So they know that um, everything that they need to know is within there. Okay, moving on. Afterwards, I send a thank you card, just like I do, just like I do with my, um, with my buyers, okay? I say, thank you so much uh, for inviting me into your beautiful home. Even if I get the listing, I still send it, right? Thank you so much for inviting me into your beautiful home. Um, I appreciate you putting your trust and blah, blah, blah. And I put it in here. When I went back to Maplewood, I saw this sitting on her kitchen counter. Right? So you give that to them after you present before you know you have it? Um, if I, I might not have it, uh -huh. even if I have it or not have it, just get it out I just it. send it. Yeah. I went to a FISBO and I sent, I said, thank you so much for you know showing me your home. Whatever I do, I send them one of these, right? So you can get these like through Canva, pretty cheap. Just make yourself your logo. And then just decide, like, does this represent you? Okay. Um, let me go back. All right. So number six, and this is the last one, I think. Guys. Okay. Offers. What's next? Materials. Okay. What do I do? So now I say, okay, you know, um, so-and-so, Maplewood. All right. Let's get going. Let's get ready to rumble. We're going to get going here. And your heart is in your throat. Like, I remember, I think I saw Makina and I was talking to Ashley and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not getting any, I'm not getting any like um, showing time requests. I'm really nervous, right? Sure enough, right? But you can't show that to your clients. So what did I do? I created a spreadsheet for myself so that this way she can see everything and they love this. They really do. Okay, and let me show you what it looks like. So I create my CMA. It shows everything. Okay, um, going down the line here. So you kind of see everything. Um, once again, I leave everything in there and I just strike it if I don't need it. Oh, this is another thing that I like to do. And she didn't decide not to do it, but document on favorite things with this, that the homeowner loves. For my listing in West Milford, I sent it to my clients, who was one of my co my former colleagues, and I said, hey, listen, do me a favor, just send me an email of things that you love about home. What drew you to this home, right? Why did you decide to purchase this home? And she was like, okay. She wrote it down, and then I put it in with the in like with the media section, with the documents. They, some, you know, additional disclosure, why my, my client loved this home, all right? Upgrades of the home, okay? So not only that, let me tell you something, that document on favorite things of the home, you know how many people came in and said, it, I was drawn to this home because of her description of what happens at the sunset what type of animals come to the backyard, right? So, and it was like a win-win. And how I put that together, I'll show it to you at the end. So it looks all like I put my brand on there and all that, so it was really nice and pretty, okay? Once again, is this a lot to do? Absolutely, right? But I wanna get my name out there, like you can trust her, she's, you know, educated, she's organized, she's going to do right by you. So I put through all here, right? And this is a transaction that's going through right now. So you can see some things are done, some things aren't done yet. So, and, and I'll be honest, like sometimes with this, I have to um, go like one day, I have to um, say, okay, 
it's spreadsheet day. I've got to get in there and mark up my spreadsheet. I still send the sending the moving article and then the review link. I send my review link um, uh, at the end. And same thing, I put what's going on, you know, and then this is my seller, my, my seller information. Here's all the documents. Um, let's see. Oh, where the lockbox is, you know, uh, let's see. And then the people involved. All right, that's that. So thank you guys for being so good. Okay, multiple offers, what happens? Well, yes, we're gonna get multiple offers usually in the climate, right? So I created a spreadsheet. <laughs> I send them the, the, the offer, right? But then I put it in here because it's so much easier. Because if you're trying to go back and forth in emails, you're gonna lose something, right? So let me show you what that looks like. I can vouch for that. It makes it so much easier. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, Tina, <laughs> Tina had a listing at Riverdale. Oh, she had to add columns. She had so many offers, <laughs> right? So I put this all through here. And then what I did was I started doing this and I changed it up. I put showing date, date and time offer was submitted. All right. Um, only because like if they, a lot of times, like let's say for instance, they showed the house like a week ago and then they took their time i actually had a client said you know what it didn't seem like they liked the house that much because they took the time it took too much time to put an offer in i was like hmm, okay right so um and so they 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 looked at it pretty quickly um home contingent you know showing time uh home contingency all this additional information they love that they love it love it love it um so let's see what else and that's it guys that's it so hopefully i have shown you how my education as well as my organization how i'm trying to make myself stand out and that's how i've created my brand um because of all these things that i do is this um, what I do is a lot, like I said, absolutely. But I'm going to be honest with you, it makes me feel confident. If When I had that spreadsheet, because someone said, oh, that's a lot of time. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a lot of time. But when I walk in, I know what I'm talking about. Right? It's a lot of time, but it saves time, too, because you're not looking through all the emails for this information. Yep. And it's all, all there. there. Yep. So any questions? I really hope I helped you today. So, uh, Starlet wants a copy of the, she said it was hard to see. Oh, sure. No worries, Starlet. I'll send, I'll send you my, um, my, the slides. slides. I got to ask Christina if I can find out who was on. There, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Any questions? Coming on your um, sign that you made, but for sellers. Mm -hmm. So do you have your photo? Do you have like some kind of logo with the AOSA logo too? That's an excellent question. Um, it depends on the team you're on, right? When I was a solo agent, I had my face and my logo. Um, now that I am with a team, it's my rider. It says Colleen Chilada. Yeah, yes. okay. Other teams... It depends on the team. Okay. Some teams will have allow you to have a writer, some teams won't. When I joined the, you know, Boswell AOSA group, I said, can I use my logo still to represent me? And they said, absolutely. Others might not let you do that. So, you know, but if you can't have a logo, can you still do all that stuff? Yeah. Absolutely. Right? So you're still building your brand, you're just building it without a logo. Um, and I mean, I, I had a lot of people that were just like, you know, I, the biggest compliment of, cause when I retired from teaching, the biggest compliment, one, one, one of my former colleagues said to me, she said, you were a phenomenal teacher and now you're a phenomenal ed agent. That's huge. You know, because I was, that's like, okay, you know, everything I've done is okay. And um, 
I was able to bring education. I was able to bring my organization. So do you want me to show you how to do that thing with the yeah. with the calendar invite? Uh -huh. Okay. I really hope this was helpful. It, it, was. it, it was. Thank you oh, very much, Colin. You are so welcome. But so calendar invite. So what, let's say for instance, so I'm going to create an event. Okay. Can you see that? Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. 